It does feel like the Chicago media, though, has already begun to project their feelings about Caleb Williams. And, you know, the hatred due to Fields, like you hear this whole he better perform or else narrative. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I think the best rookie season in, in NFL history, or at least in modern history, was Cam Newton in his first year. Um, and he had, uh, I believe, a little over 4,000 yards passing, 700 yards rushing. Uh, he had D'Angelo Williams and uh, Jonathan Stewart with him on that team. Um, his Steve Smith receiver, Greg Olson Steve, too. Yep, Steve Smith uh, Sr., uh, Greg Olson. Greg Olson, yeah. and then the backup was uh, Jeremy Shockey. So he had so, some weapons on that team, and they still went 6-10, and 10, right? So Caleb Williams is a rookie, and – what do you think is the actual realistic type of projection here for this kid this year? The real expectations that you're looking at with Caleb Williams is he should be one of the better rookie performers we've seen at the quarterback position in some time. And the way that I say that is because having evaluated him, uh, I mean, I went through and watched every single one of the passes that he's thrown in college. So that's, kind of insane of me, but at the same time, it goes to show in, in my process of watching him and identifying uh, his strengths and weaknesses, I see someone who can contribute at the NFL level right away, make an impact and eventually develop into a potential superstar player. There's a bit of expectation for him to perform very well because of that. There's a prominent media member who said that this is the best surrounding, like supporting cast that a number one pick a quarterback has had in the last 30 years at least. The fact that the number one pick didn't come from Chicago's own poor play, you're looking at now DJ Moore and Keenan Allen at wide receiver, an up-and-coming offense, a strong defense. There's a lot to like there in Chicago. So you're throwing in a, a high-end blue-chip quarterback prospect. The expectation should be high. It's a rookie quarterback. Even the best rookie quarterbacks, even Andrew Luck coming out, even, Pey even Peyton Manning. I know that's 90s. It's basically a different game of football at that point. Even Andrew Luck, even Cam Newton, even Justin Herbert, even Joe Burrow, even Trevor Lawrence, all those highly touted quarterbacks who performed well, they made rookie mistakes. And I expect no different out of Caleb Williams. I expect him to be good. I th expect him and believe he's going to be an upgrade at quarterback over Justin Fields. But at the same time, I feel like there has to be a level of realism and we need to keep a – you know, a more level-headed approach in terms of what to expect out of a rookie quarterback uh, coming out of the gate. Jacob, do you know who uh, holds the rookie record for most interceptions? Most interceptions? Uh, 28 interceptions, yeah. rookie season. I'm going to guess because he's the first name I come to mind. I'm going to say Peyton Manning. It is Peyton Manning, and he is quoted to say that he's going to hold on to that record forever because <laughs> no one in this league now is patient enough to sit there and stick behind a quarterback. If they throw 28 interceptions in a rookie year, you're going to give up on them. So yeah. the, the contradictory thing is that now we have Keenan Allen, you have DJ Moore, you're going to add more pieces, but Caleb Williams is supposed to throw for 4,000 yards also, yet if he doesn't, he's a failure. So rather than giving him excuses as a rookie, we're going to be lambasting him or crucifying a, a rookie 23-year-old, 22-year-old, for not having an outstanding performance as a rookie quarterback. He is a rookie. He should underperform your expectations, no matter what the situation he goes into anyway. I think it's unfair in the sense that the expectation now has gone into rookie records – NFL records, Bears records, right? 4,000 yards. 4,000 yards from a rookie is unrealistic. But if he doesn't do it by year two or year three, I would understand the criticism. Yes, you'd like him to perform really, really well. But at the end of the day, he is a rookie. So he's going to not meet your expectations. He's going to make some really bad mistakes. Do you think this narrative would still exist? If it was Drake May or Jaden Daniels, say the Bears do drop back from pick one to pick two and take Drake May. Is all of a sudden Drake May expected to have the best rookie season of all time? Maybe not as high of expectations as what we see with Caleb, but I still think that it's a matter of, oh, May better do really well or else. Daniels better do really well or else. I feel like regardless of who the quarterback would be, even if it's not Caleb, which I expect it to be, uh, those fans are still going to hold him to a very high level just because 
all right, hey, you again, you got rid of the quarterback that I want. This new guy, it's like, all right, well, he better be good. You know, I tend to just look at certain stats and things like that. However, I never let it get too far. I never get carried away with just stats because to me, the eye test and the situational uh, circumstances matter a lot. But when I was looking at Justin Fields, one thing that stuck out to me is I I look year to year. I look at this uh, analytic that I call the chaos analytic, where I look at the total dropbacks. Mm-hmm. that a guy has and then uh, compare it to the amount of pass attempts. So saying, hey, if the offensive coordinator calls a passing play and you drop back with the intent to pass, how often does the ball actually leave your hands versus it becoming a, a rush or a sack or a fumble, something else other than the ball leaving your hands, right? Yeah. And uh, when I broke this down into percentages, the best of the best of them can get around four, five, six percent. I mean, Brady in his last year was at like four percent, meaning only four percent of the time when a pass play was called, he wound up pretty much just getting sacked. I mean, Brady's not about to run it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, most of the league is at around 10 percent. Some mm-hmm. of the more uh mobile quarterbacks you see 12, 13 percent in Justin Fields' is three years, it went 29 percent or 24 percent, 29 percent, and 22 percent. Mm-hmm. So, as a offensive play caller yeah one out of every five pass plays winds up being something else and to me that just shows inability no control over an offensive scheme and so like when you pair it up with the eye test you you see it this kid is light years away from playing the position to the top tier extent that some of these guys in this league play um you know, even Patrick Mahomes said, hey, my first couple of years, I didn't know how to read defense. He's manipulating defenses now. He is. Yeah. He's straight up not only reading them, he is playing with these guys. Peyton Manning was the best of them to do it. And so I think that's one of the things that is a problem with Justin Fields. It's like, yes, he's a great athlete. He's a good dude. He's a great character. He's got great work ethic, this and that. But when it comes to the quarterback position, I just haven't seen that control uh, from a guy who's played the position for years, you know, you'd think it'd be better. So I think even if Caleb comes in and has whatever kind of statistical season for me, uh, there's something to see in comfort out there. You know, when, when I've watched some of his highlights and things like that, I see a lot of comfort at the position from Caleb Williams. So I think a lot of the pressure on Caleb Williams is a projection of pressure that you used to have for Justin Fields. Right. So, when you look at what you expected out of Justin Fields, in year four out of a quarterback, you expect them to make significant strides, significant leaps, and get better and better and better. Whereas now you have a rookie quarterback, but you expect those projections and those leaps to be applied to the to the new guy because you expect him to be better at the position, right? Which, yeah. at the end of the day, is not fair. Over This isn't Madden, right? I don't even think Caleb Williams needs to be the best rookie quarterback in this draft class to still meet, in my mind, his expectations. He needs to be the best quarterback that the Bears have seen in a while. I think he needs to throw for 3,000, 3,500 yards and make it look, you know, uh, past the eye test, like you said, right? But in terms of what he needs to do to make this team make a playoff run or playoff push, I don't think that Caleb Williams needs to break any records. I don't think he needs to be the best quarterback or even like rookie of the year this year, it would be nice, but I don't think that's a realistic and be what needs to happen.